Coming up on Rob on the Road, best road trips. Spend the day with goats and hops at Lincoln's Goat House Brewing Company. Take a hike in Placer County and find California's official state insect, the rare dog face butterfly. Go inside the Chuki Store Museum and we'll toast 10 seasons in California's wine country. Rob on the Road, a decade of destinations, best road trips starts now. And now, Rob on the Road, exploring Northern California. Best road trips begins in Lincoln, California. You know it's going to be fun if it involves baby goats, a sustainable farm, and a bustling brewery. Let's hop right into this delightful destination. Yay. Who wants to do goat yoga? Yay. 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 <laughs> we got a bunch of babies. You don't mind? Yeah, they, even the goats are screaming. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is Kathy and Michael, and they are the owners of this beautiful, beautiful yeah. Goat yeah. House Brewery. Yeah. Thank you. Yay, thank you guys for coming. Welcome to Goat House. Um, so we are uh, one of the only farm to tap breweries in the state of California. So we grow our own hops, um, we raise goats, we're a sustainable farm, and more importantly, we get to do goat yoga with the baby goats in the spring. Inhale it up and then exhale, round it down. And I want you to think about the innocence of the goats. There's no right or wrong to any of the movements we're gonna do this morning. So just let your body flow. Now as we do our cat cows, start to move the hips back forward, just bringing some healthy, organic, simple movement to the body. <laughs> <laughs> they really like you guys this morning. Let's do two more of these. <laughs> One of the things I want to make sure I get across is that this is not fun and games. This is really about letting nature in. This is Randall. He is six days old, and he's right here, part of the yoga class. It's very calm, and you are in their space, and they come to you. It's oddly peaceful. Hi, Bonnie. I want to go around one person at a time, and I just want you to say like one feeling or emotion or thought that bubbles up. All right, so we'll start here in front row. Just uh, one, one word. Playfulness. Fun. Fun. Gratitude. Peaceful. Grounded. Joy. Love. Up. And then exhale. Shake it out. Beautiful. One more full breath in. Together we bow and say namaste. Namaste. Namaste right here with you, baby. <laughs> what do goats and beer have in common? <laughs> That's a very good question, Rob. Fun? Is it about fun? Um, or? It, takes well, it, it takes a lot of beer. It takes a lot of beer. I make cheese. Um, so um, the goats do feed our families and um, work with um, the hops so they help weed control. I see. So hops need nitrogen. Oh, so it's... I see. It's, it's a all part circle. of the cycle, and yes. then the yoga is just let's zen it up. It's an immersive experience into the farm. So um, you know, as we are, we are a working farm. So um, you know, we have a cover crop down in the hops, um, and so you know, we're growing, we're growing a crop, and so it's not very often we can get people into the hop field or in with the goats, and so we do. Um, especially in the spring we do um, with goat yoga we have you know nine little fresh babies mamas and babies are doing really well it's a very just an immersive experience into you know kind of a working sustainable farm that is also a brewery is it possible to have peaceful goat yoga I think that's exactly what it is. Yeah. I mean, yoga in itself <laughs> is about, about you know finding your center and, and being um, you know just kind of connecting um, but when you're doing it at in with goats, the goats don't fake anything. So they're they're very mm. authentic. So when they choose to rub on you and they choose to sit with you and they choose to be with you, that is that is a very authentic experience. And I'm um, like when our donkey and Rory, when he comes over really um, and wants a rub, then you know he he's not going to fake that. So it's, it's very much a connecting to I nature. I, I, that, I did not expect that. I I thought it was going to be more comic relief right it, it, but i love the authenticity and the intentional part it is and it's very much i mean you're out 
you know, we're out on our farm, you know, there's birds and clouds and, you know, there's, we're surrounded by nature. There's very little concrete. Um, plants are growing, birds are singing. We've got, you know, geese being born, baby goats all around. Um, just, you know, no electronics, just, we have no Wi-Fi. Just relax and connect back to nature. We're hiking along the Shootamole Bear River Preserve just outside of Auburn. This land is home to something incredibly rare. It only happens once a year. The hatching of the California State insect, the dog face butterfly, and uh, grab a California State driver's license. We'll tell you the connection at the end of the segment. We're in the middle of what feels like paradise out here with the land manager for the Placer Land Trust, Justin Wages. Good to see you, bud. Great to be here. Thank you for coming. Oh, it's so beautiful. Look, this is an amazing place. 40 acres of paradise along the Bear River. Unbelievable. This is preserved. And on this preserve is a treasure for California, the state insect. Yes, the state butterfly, the California dog face butterfly. Uh, it is only found in California uh, and it's quite rare. Um, most people never get to see it. Uh, it's a high and fast flyer. Uh, the, the famous quote is one in 10,000 Californians ever get to see this thing. Um, I think it's, a, it's actually a greater ratio than that. Once we see them, we catch them so that we can show them to you because they just zoom, 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 zoom. Oh, they're so fast. Oh, look. <gasps> oh, it's not camera shy. It's, it, oh. Can you see the poodle head? Come here, baby. Oh, oh, don't go perfect, away. Don't perfect. go away. Look at that. Can you see oh, the poodle-shaped face on there? These are all over the place, out here specifically. Why here? You know, we don't know. The geography of the area, the soil types, there's something that we just call it magical about the place. We don't know for certain why, but there's a huge population of Amorpha californica or false indigo. That's the plant they eat off of. Yeah, that's the sole food source for the larval stage of this butterfly, much like milkweed is for a monarch. Bob Gilliam, you've been with the Placer Land Trust for more than 15 years. You actually helped buy this land for the Placer Land Trust. We did. It preserves about a half mile of the Bear River, and then, um, Later on, we got this special treat of discovering that the dog face butterfly was more plentiful here than anywhere else in California. Wow, I guess that's one of the neat things about putting land uh, in preservation is that who knows what it's gonna unfold. That's right, I think if you, if you protect the most important habitat, you're gonna eventually be protecting the most important species in the area. Ooh, I like that. Remember I mentioned the California State Driver's License? All right, look below the picture on the license, then the signature, and at the very bottom on the left-hand corner, you will see the California State Insect, the dog face Butterfly. On the road today in Fiddletown, Amador County, and just feet off of the road, is one of the rarest things I have found in all of my travels in California, the Chu Key Store Museum. And inside are artifacts that date back to the 1850s. Let's go. These beautiful artifacts are original to this store and they are spectacular. This is Elaine Zorbis. She is the historian with the Fiddletown Preservation Society. Good to see you. Nice to meet you. Wow. <laughs> All I can say is wow. That's what most people say when they come to the store. It's a time capsule of Chinese life in the New World mm. from um, 1855 until 1965 when the last Chinese person in Fiddletown passed away. His name was Fong Chao Yu otherwise known as Jimmy Chow, Jimmy and, he, Chow. and he lived in the store and passed away in 1965. It, it's something unique to California because, uh, you know, most of the Chinatowns were destroyed and most of the buildings were destroyed, sometimes with arson. But this particular building, which is rare in its construction, it's rammed earth, packing mud and dirt between forms. Everywhere I look, I see something to me that is stunningly beautiful. Just from the teapots to the beautiful pieces of Chinese tapestry uh, to the baskets and mainly the medicine. 
Well, it's also, um, there were three different succession of tenants who lived in this building. So the first tenant was an herb doctor. His name was Yi Feng Cheng, otherwise known as Dr. Yi. And uh, there are descendants of his that still live in Sacramento. But he was the first in America. With the herb doctor, people would come in with a melody. And so he would um, examine them, not like we examine. Um, most of the examination was done by looking at the person, looking at their tongue, and Touch. feeling their, and, and right, pulsology. Mm -hmm. There are various pulse points. It's 5,000 years old, it Chinese is. medicine. And there are pieces in, yeah. on the other side here that show all of the various medicines that were used here. That's why I said this was one of the rarest things I found. It's because you've not gone out and collected these to bring them here. They've been here. Yes. Well, the last wow. person in the store was Jimmy Chow, and he was adopted by Chu Ki. Jimmy became part of the community. He um, lived in the, he grew up in the store. He learned Chinese in the store. I imagine he helped Chu Ki. And these are pictures of him. So when he was a young boy, he wore his hair back from his he head in, um, with a long braid and back called a queue. And this was required by the emperor of China. It's, we're so lucky, it's so rare. There's nothing like this in California. Everything in here is original to the stores. It's got to be safe. In the little town of Fiddletown, well, that's what we're working. We're working very hard to raise money to save the store. We're here with Karen Yi, who has a, a personal connection to this <laughs> phenomenal place. Hey there. Hello. Good to see you. Well, nice to see you too. I love your Chinese robe. Well, thank you so much. Why must this be saved? Why must the culture and the history be saved for the future? Is there story there? I definitely think so. I mean, it's the um, people need to look to the past to you know, preserve uh, what has gone on and learn from it so that they don't make mistakes in the future. If you could say something to Jimmy today, if he were sitting right here, what would you say to him? Well, certainly, thank you. For? For preserving and, uh, you know, keeping this place alive. He was loved by the community. And today, the same community is hoping to restore what that love did here. Yes, yes. I wish are. you all the luck it. with that. Thank you so much, Rob. I have Thank full you. faith you can do it. <laughs> At the Chu Key Store Museum in Fiddletown, Amador County. Fascinating location. Shenandoah Valley. Still ahead, we toast 10 seasons of Rob on the Road with road trips to Calaveras and Amador County wineries. But first, a trip to San Joaquin County for a first place prize that'll tempt your taste buds. I heard the best barbecue on the planet is in Stockton and boom, thank you, there it is. We had to come check it out today. It's Rob and Rob on the Road, yeah! You have created the world's best barbecue sauce. Okay, what in the world? It is my recipe. It's my intellectual rights. That is your, <laughs> that's your taste that's buds too. mine. And your wife's. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. I'm gonna grab it because this is legit. Uh, this says the American Royal World Series of Barbecue, best sauce on the planet, 2017. You also won 2018, first person ever in 31 years of the competition to take the globe twice. You also took on a lot of people that work for the Food Network and blew them out of the water too. I'm just there to do my thing, but, but there's some big names in barbecue that had put their barbecue sauce in the competition and I just smoked them. What will take it to the next level for you? And I want it to be something that I work for and I take it to the top. We're working on it right now to take it nationwide. I gotta do this if this is the winner. Mm. Okay, that's delicious. Why frog sauce? If it's for barbecue, why is it called frog sauce? Everybody knows that when you put your rub on your meat, you rub it, rub it, 
Oh, <laughs> like frog, ribbit, ribbit. This is your wife right over here, right? Come on in, Whitney. Hi. <laughs> Putting you on the spot here yes, because you are. you are part of the uh, secret to success here. Sweet and tangy. Sweet That's and tangy. Yes. Sweet and tangy right here. So this is the one that won in 2018. Yep. And it came from your taste buds yes. and your desires. Well, because he, you know, I, he, I, mean, I believe in his passion and I believe in what he's doing, but I couldn't handle the pepper and the frog sauce. Mm -hmm. So I just am grateful that he has one that I can use every night on the dinner table. Grab your favorite piece of meat here and well, let's me, take us right. out. We want you to savor in this wonderful, sweet success story. Jeez. Rob, I'm so happy for you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Rob you. Ryan, Thank you. Whitney Ryan, Thank with you. the world's best barbecue sauce voted at the Kansas City competition. Good to see you. Thanks. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Well, welcome to the beautiful Ironstone Vineyards and entertainment complex and winery and you name it with the creators of this beautiful place, Gail and John Kautz. Good to see you both. Great Thank to you. have you. Great to have you here. It's Great so to have nice. you for sure. That's for sure. How the heck did you pull this off? <laughs> a lot of hard work and, and a lot of great people working with us. And not that long of a time, since 1989. Since 1989, but we started with beautiful country. Yes, yes but you also country. created quite a draw. Yeah. Um, what do you have here? Everything. We have everything that anyone would want to see. Different venues for different actions. Uh, food, wine, music, so, art. Uh, the wine is a big draw. Excellent wine. It's very, very well received. We ship into 50 countries. We wanted to bring people up to the county to see and enjoy it. And we figured that we needed to have a draw for them. We have great wines, but there are many wineries that have great wines too. So we wanted to have something special, and that's what we've done. Gold. A little bit of gold. A little bit. This is gold country. And so we have the- This is our history. Yes, we have the world's largest crystalline gold nugget on display. Wow. This is our pride and joy and what we have been so fortunate to preserve. Where in the world did you get this? This came from nine air miles. Gold. From where it sits today at Sonora Mining, the Crystalline Mine. The amphitheater is right through there. My gosh, what a place to hear music. And we do hear a lot of it. <laughs> <laughs> this is the stage and all the people that fill the lawns here. Uh, you say you do it for smiles and joy? Yes. You're a music yes. lover. Yes. Definitely a music lover. This terraced amphitheater is also the setting for a yearly gathering and a dream realized for John and Gail. One of their goals was to create a casual and welcoming gold country event for thousands of visitors to enjoy the Ironstone Vineyards Concourse d'Elegance, where hundreds of classic cars, trucks, race cars, even motorcycles and trailers are on display. But this is about much more than just automotive classics. From the start, the Kaltzes dedicated this event to helping the next generation of young Californians achieve their dreams of careers in agriculture. Since the concourse began more than 20 years ago, it's raised more than $500,000 for ag youth programs like Future Farmers of America and 4-H. It's one of our favorite events because we get to come out to the public and talk to them. It's actually really cool to come out here and realize that they're here to support FFA and 4-H rather than just come to look at the cars to benefit somebody else. They're doing it for a cause. You know, we could put a cars like this alongside uh, comparable achievements in the arts and architecture, uh, in motion pictures, and they hold their own. The late Kevin Starr, renowned historian and former state librarian, said it best. The Ironstone Concourse provides not just vivid chapters in a living book of automotive history, but captured moments in the very evolution of the California dream. We certainly would not have California today unless we had the automotive culture, the automotive contribution. So it doesn't surprise me that California design and the automobile 
have created such marvelous examples over the years. I think automobiles are remarkable art forms, remarkable sociological activators, remarkable instances of the elegance and poetry of the particular decade that produced them. The concourse draws more than 300 entries from all over California and beyond. You may spot a 1905 Studebaker electric car right alongside John's own authentic Studebaker wheelbarrow. Yes, that's what the Studebaker brothers first manufactured when they came to California during the gold rush. Of course, there are many other perfectly preserved and restored vehicles from the beginning of the 20th century. From the 1930s and 40s, there are gorgeous Duesenbergs and Packards, Pierce Arrows, and Lincoln Continentals. Favor the 50s or 60s, there's plenty of gorgeous Thunderbirds, Corvettes, and other beauties from that era. Even race car aficionados will find their hearts accelerating. Some vehicles are truly one of a kind, like this 1938 Phantom Corsair, designed and built by an heir to the Heinz ketchup fortune, or this Italian beauty, the 1955 Nardi Lancia Blu-ray One. Others are equal parts rare and just plain fun, like this 1936 Brooks Stevens house car. How about a 1946 Pontiac Steamliner police car? A 1962 Dodge truck once owned by California State Parks. And you may discover some American classics with names you've never heard of before. Lee Webbs brought his 1932 Franklin Club sedan all the way from Bakersfield. This is a 1932 Club sedan. It's a fairly rare car. There probably are maybe eight or 10 left in the world. The Ironstone Concourse takes place each September. If you love classic vehicles of all different kinds, it's definitely worth attending. Did you ever think you'd You'd be that. No, I don't think so. I don't think we ever thought about it. No. We just, we hoped it would happen, but we didn't no. build it from that in mind. No. It just was part of the show. Yeah. Well, and now that it's happened, what's next for y'all? <laughs> oh, there's no stopping. <laughs> yeah. I know, I know, I've watched. On, you'll, 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 you'll never stop this guy. <laughs> oh, no, we've got some great plans in the future. Share them. Oh, no. no. Oh, no. Oh, give us, no, a, no. Give us no. a little bit. No, no. no. Okay. <laughs> More. More. <laughs> Welcome to Amador County. This is Iron Hub Winery. This is the Iron Hub, and this region is getting statewide attention. The Shenandoah Valley on Rob on the Road! I have traveled this state and seen so many beautiful places, but wow, this is definitely right there. This is the Shenandoah Valley, and Beth and Tom Jones are here with Iron Hub Winery. Good to see you both. Excellent Welcome. to see you. What a beautiful place. Oh, thank you. Yeah, we looked all over California, and this was the best we could find for a new wine. Really? Yes. Why this spot? Tom's a longtime winemaker, wonderful experience, and this area provides the community, the wine knowledge, the wine enthusiasm, the culture, and the wonderful soils and vineyards here. So Tom's really been enjoying this camaraderie and, and all of the welcome that we've had. So this region is getting so much attention. You hear Amador wines, Amador wines, what in the world is it? Oh, it's just the soil. It's wonderful granitic soil. It gives enough moisture to keep the crop happy, but not too much so that you get a huge uh, canopy. Season wide in this part of Shenandoah Valley has a gorgeous breeze that pulls up through the Sierras. And grapes love it, we love it, the patio loves it. This tasting room, you can see completely all the way around the valley. We can see the uh, Neighbors, which was a vineyard planted when Abraham Lincoln was in the White House. Get out. All the way through to the quilt of the vineyards up to the crystal range of the Sierras. Shenandoah Valley, why is it called that? This is the Shenandoah Valley, I understand, because of the immigrants that moved here in the 1850s. And it looked like home. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the area now is often referred to as the Tuscany of California because of its picturesque views. We've been working at this for 30 years, and so to be able to express it in this 
venue is really fortunate. Are you happy? Oh, we're so happy. I love having customers come in and being able to share our story and Tom's lines. To have our children involved, it's just really a dream come true. It's the California dream, it really is. I'm so happy for you guys. Thank you. Well, thanks. Thank you for letting us here today. Beautiful Shenandoah Valley. And we can see the fruits of your labor, uh, both the wine and the kids. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cheers to the camera. Cheers. Yay, and check us out online at robontheroad.org for all of our stories. Thanks, y'all. Thank you. Thank you. What fun. I'm Rob Stewart. Thank you for joining us as we celebrate 10 seasons of Rob on the Road.